Good day, everyone, and welcome back to the Intelligent Automation World Series. My name is Rochelle Hood, and I have the pleasure of serving as today's chair for this session and also to help moderate throughout the entire session today. First of all, let me walk you through a couple of session logistics to make sure that you can get most out of this session. In your audience view screen, you're going to see your presentation in the middle. And on the left-hand side, you're going to see a Q&A box where you can ask any questions you have about the conference as a whole, any technical questions that you may have in terms of the platform. And then also, we encourage you to use this early and often to present some questions to our, our speakers today. Secondly, I wanted to draw your attention to your digital gift bag, which is termed to be your resource library. There's some highly valuable resources there that we're going to mention today that you'll also be able to receive tomorrow when you receive the link to the recording. You can access those resources to download then or at any time. So with those quick logistics out of the way, it's really my pleasure to welcome a very expert team to the stage today. We're going to be talking about accelerating and amplifying the value of automation with process discovery. So with that, I would like to turn the stage, digital stage over to Satish from Edgeware, who's going to introduce the, the panel of experts and introduce today's topic. Satish, over to you. Thanks, Rochelle. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being part of this webinar. My name is Satish Sitaramaya. I'm part of Edgeware, and I had uh, the assistant, which is the automation product suite from Edgeware. I'm joined today by uh, a distinguished guest, uh, Vijay Shankar, uh, who's partner and practice leader from robotics and intelligent automation from ENY. Uh, ENY is a strategic partner of Edgeware. We're happy Vijay has joined us. I also have um, a member from Edgeware, Srikant Day, who is the lead uh, product management from Assisted, who will also be part of this panel. With that, let me start today's uh, webinar. The topic, as, uh, as Rochelle mentioned, is uh, accelerating and amplifying the power of automation with process discovery. Before we jump in to uh, talking about process discovery, I'll spend some time giving you an overview of uh, our thoughts on where automation space is and why process discovery is important. And then I'll hand it over to Vijay to do a deep dive around the importance of process discovery on their experience. And then Shikan will take over from there to show the product which actually we believe will help plug this gap that exists in the industry today. With that, as you all know, the world of automation and RPA continues to evolve and change rapidly, technically and more importantly, solving very interesting use cases. While the journey of automation has naturally started from back office related processes, addressing low hanging fruits and primarily focusing on taking out costs. Uh, which includes improved compliance, uh, improved quality, improving accuracy, productivity. These have been the main drivers. Over time, it's become clear that the real deal is when automation starts embracing processes that touch the customer, essentially accelerating time to value and time to market. The survey done by Forrester indicated that over 70 percent believe automation will impact time to market a product. It has also become clear that automation and RPA are not only here to stay, but have also become an integral part of every company's digital transformation strategy. A study done by Deloitte, which you see on the screen, indicated more than 50% believe intelligent automation would be a game changer. When I say intelligent automation, essentially meaning RPA, along with other cognitive capabilities, solving use cases that involve vision, speech, and lots of unstructured information. So with so many possibilities with intelligent automation, it would be a lost opportunity if enterprises do not invest in having a deep understanding of their processes and redesigning them to maximize business outcomes. As I said, the, the survey that was done by Deloitte 
clearly said that intelligent automation is the way forward. With this backdrop, it is important to understand that RPA will become a fundamental infrastructure on which future digital workforce is going to evolve. The world of automation is going to be much more broader than RPA. So it will involve many cognitive capabilities and technologies as well, such as MI, ML, machine learning, and NLP, and et cetera. Hence, the investments have to be future-proofed. When I mean future-proofed, it means having the right approach to discover automation opportunities, to invest in designing the future processes, and also having the ability to deploy and manage multiple kinds of bots, including attended, unattended, and cognitive. At Edgeverb, we believe the following, which is P3 framework, is a good way for companies to anchor and drive their automation strategy. And P3 essentially means three pillars. And the first pillar being discover, the second one being automate, and the third one being orchestrate. So P3 is discover, automate, and orchestrate. Discover is all about understanding the current operation using empirical data. And again, let me underline the word empirical data. Reimagining the future operating model and crafting an automation blueprint, leveraging the right set of technologies. Again, right set of technologies because it's beyond our and also establishing and tracking the ROI. So that's what Discover will all do. The second pillar is about automate, and this has to do with deciding the right automation infrastructure. Infrastructure that will allow flexibility to tap into various technologies, including the vision, OCR, ML, NLP, and other AI technologies, and also providing enough flexibility to minimize switching costs because AI technologies are rapidly you know, evolving and lots of innovations are happening, and to also make sure that the organization and the IT infrastructure are the right balance between on-premise and cloud. The third pillar is on orchestrate, and orchestrate is everything to do with managing multi-vendor automation environment, building the infrastructure to manage the future human digital workforce, and also having the right governance of, within the IT environment in the context of automation to manage complexity related to scale. Moving on, I'll just cover a few challenges that the industry faces today with respect to automation. See, as we all know, thousands of companies have embraced uh, automation. Many have started pilots, some have scaled them, but there are quite a few challenges. Edgeworth recently did a survey of automation practitioners, automation champions, and key stakeholders who are driving automation. And this is what we found. Essentially, very low rate of success. One third pegged their success at 20% or less, and over two thirds felt their success rate was less than 50%. Just 3% of the, the audience that we polled indicated that they would rate their automation programs as really, really successful, which is 70%, 80% of the bow. But we went on to ask the reason for failure and program ineffectiveness. About three-fourths of the respondents gave reasons relating to challenges in identifying the right process and establishing the right ROI. So most of the challenges we believe in the automation industry is right around getting to know what processes to automate, what technologies to use to automate, and making sure we have established the right kind of ROI structure and a platform to track the ROI. At Edgeworth, having handled over 200-plus large RPA implementations with G2K customers, We've seen a direct correlation between automation success and deep understanding of the processes being automated. In other words, lack of deep process understanding creates challenges in establishing and realizing automation ROI. Having deep appreciation and understanding of processes with all the nuances of human and system interaction is critical, not just for automation, but for the entire digital transformation journey. The most prevalent approach to to understand the process and multiple tasks that make up a process is manual in nature. And manual process documentation has some serious challenges. Interviewing people who are concerned about automation may not be forthright in saying the best practices. Even SMEs may not know all the variations. The other issue is manual approach can leave out a lot of numerous nuanced process innovations that may have happened on the floor where operators are executing the processes. 
Many organizations have outsourced process executions to BPO vendors, which also adds another layer of complexity. Change management, based on some of the implementations we have involved, can become a huge challenge as the data that is used to drive this change, change is colored with human biases. So process discovery is what we believe is the approach that all organizations need to take as their first step, is to understand their process, appreciate all the nuances. Process discovery, which is based on empirical data, that, has, that eliminates all the human biases. Process discovery that sketches all the variations and nuances of human interactions with systems, establishing a basis to develop an ROI. Process discovery that gives rich insights needed to design a comprehensive automation blueprint and to create a dearest automation navigation strategy. Process discovery that facilitates change management, as I said earlier, there are change management issues and automation is like any other transformation program um, that the digital transformation enterprise that embrace. And we believe change management is gonna be extremely critical. And to do that, process discovery with empirical data will make a huge difference. And also process discovery can engage key stakeholders through data-driven insight and help redesigning the processes, which can consider various technologies, including RPS. To close my part of this presentation, I would like to just again mention that process discovery as a basis to drive automation strategy, we believe is a very successful approach. Organizations, um, that have tried to do this have seen higher amount of success. And embracing process discovery is, is, is going to improve the ability to accelerate and amplify the value of automation. With this, I will hand over the presentation to Vijay to uh, take us through the findings from EY's implementation experience in terms of what has worked and how companies should probably look at increasing their success rate of automation. Vijay, over to you. Thanks, Satish. Uh, uh, good morning to every one of you, or actually good afternoon to every one of you. Uh, you know, very happy to be here uh, to share uh, my thoughts around, uh, you know, how we see automation expansion as well as how process discovery uh, forms an integral part of any digital transformation programs that companies would run. Uh, at EY, um, we've been at the forefront of uh, driving automation with large organizations. Uh, you know, having done it for ourselves, uh, we have thousands of bots that run our own businesses, and we've been working back with a number of organizations in in driving their automation automation programs. Uh, one of the key elements that we we see as uh, companies move forward on on automation journeys is uh, how do you how do you really bring uh, you know uh, value as well as as acceleration towards towards the entire entire program. Uh, you know, from from the time of selecting a process till the way uh, all the way to realizing the benefits of 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 the digital program or the automation program. Uh, you know, at at EY, we've been working back with large organizations where where they are looking to develop and deliver almost you know 30 40 bots per month, uh, which which drives drives an important important element is uh, in, in saying, are we selecting the right process for automation? Uh, you know, every process can be automated, but is that the right process that we need to take uh, for automation? Uh, across the program uh, where we have worked back with clients, uh, we've had a number of challenges in the way that how processes are being selected for automation. And this is where process discovery plays, a, plays an important role in, in, in this. Uh, you know, typical challenges that we face when we go into into clients is, uh, you know, the you know, typically we have the subject matter experts or the or the uh, person identified uh, to provide the details of the processes uh, do not really understand the full spectrum of the processes. You know, uh, you know, the challenge that we have is our businesses are complex, our processes are are, are, are not standardized. Uh, there are a number of variations, and these don't get captured, uh, you know, when we do the process discussions with the SMEs, etc. Uh, the other element is that, uh, you know, in 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 the clear identification of the of the effort involved uh, in 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 these activities, uh, yeah, you know, this this comes to a point where, 
you know we have very different views uh, around when when we do the assessments you know uh, we have estimations about you know five fts working this this operations you know this is what the benefits are etc but then once the automations are done uh, you know the benefit realization is much lower uh, we call this as value leakage and across the automation programs we we see a lot of value leakage happening if we don't if we don't cal uh, calculate the uh, accurate uh, effort involved the final part is uh, you know the entire exercise is highly manual and time consuming uh, we've we've had challenges where uh, companies come back and say the cost of identifying the processes is much higher than the cost of automation itself now which which begs the point to say that we are we automating or or we need to identify you know we are uh, you know we need to find uh, or spend money in identifying the processes that needs to be automated with so i think if if you really look at it i mean um, the entire way of how companies will accelerate digital transformation and process uh, automation our uh, ability to identify these processes are going to be extremely uh, significant and important uh, as as companies go through uh, process discovery plays uh, an important role and i think uh, you know the product that uh, uh, assistage has the discover uh, brings in a, a variety of important elements which will drive uh, business benefits as well as uh, increase value of uh, of automation uh, one of the one of the key key elements is that you know it's data data driven uh you know it's not about someone's perception of effort uh spent uh, someone's perception of or or subjective uh, calculation of how a process has to be uh, worked upon but it's actually based on uh, uh, you know detailed uh, uh data you know, of how processes are being uh, executed with it provides a good view of how the processes are uh, you know especially where we have variances and you know exceptions that are being uh, done ac- done across and it provides a good view of how the uh, how the uh, processes are executed and and what it finally does is it takes away the dependency on the smes uh, you know i think it's an important element because sometimes your automation is as good as the knowledge of the smes now if you don't find the right smes who can provide you the details of the processes uh, your automations are going to be as good as that uh, and in all organizations you don't get uh, your your best smes to spend time in the programs because you got a day job to run uh, you know what the discover tool does is it takes takes away that uh, criticality and 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 use the sme as a more as someone who could validate uh the outcomes of the pro- of the processes that have been identified rather than you know provide a lot of lot of time uh to to collect the data and so on and so forth the last part i think is 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 it's non intrusive uh so therefore you know it's not uh, it's not something that someone will have to consciously be told to do uh you know it's, it runs at the background and you get a lot of information that uh, that uh, one can use on if if you really see if you, if you add elements of where the issues are uh and as well as what the discover tool uh, in particular uh, can can achieve uh there are number of number of benefits that are there uh, either either from uh, you know being being able to accurately identify the processes that that requires uh, digital intervention or automation uh, rapidly scale uh, you know you know identifying backlogs of hundreds and thousands of processes uh you know in a few weeks time uh you know something which is unheard of and something which is which is uh, you know you know it's not possible if you have to go through uh, you know geography by geography function by function or business by business uh you know organizations which are uh, you know global uh you know the cost of automation is is going to be very critically watched and and uh, you know for you to scale is important i think the the element that we as as, as consulting organizations start to look at is say now how do you make sure that you have a good trail of from the time when you've identified an opportunity till the way that, that the benefit has been realized uh, value leakage is clear is important uh, we we see uh, you know uh, one third of uh, uh, every automation only scales up uh, so which means that a lot of companies uh you know are looking uh, uh not uh, you know looking at opportunities but not able to scale up and and realize benefits of uh, of automation uh, 
then if you if you really look at from just from a product standpoint and i think it's important to to just kind of spend some time uh, uh and 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 walk you through this team of of elements of how how all of this is included with and 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 in further down the down the session uh we will have the shikant also providing the product product demo but i think it's it's uh, and and we've been we've been partnering back with us stage and and uh, working back with a lot of companies as well uh you know the entire architecture of process discovery is is trying to use elements of uh, uh ai and machine learning in the process discovery stage itself and to what satish pointed out uh that you know the three pillars uh, you know it's not about just using ai and ml only at the time of automate but it's also at the time of discovery which is i think is the important aspect of it i think process the discover process uh, uh, you know tool provides that element as well uh, where where you can use uh, very uh, uh, very focused uh, you know ai ml techniques which will help you identify uh, the right level of automations and and, and projects uh, projects around it uh, one of the other elements that i think we uh, we see uh, during the during uh, execution of of projects uh, is that um, uh, our our ability to to take different sets of data points and 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 then bring them bring them together uh this tool in particular uh, you know works across industry uh, and it's highly customizable you know some of our clients uh, use uh, access applications through citrix which again is uh, uh, you know is not very favorable to automation but i think you still need to kind of use to identify the processes uh, you know it's very scalable so it's both you know on prem as well as cloud uh you know it helps you identify different uh, variations and exceptions in the process uh i think one of the key elements in this is uh you know building a strong business layer uh, uh to the picture uh, alongside with uh, with with the with the business logic see i think uh, if if you if you really look at it every process is a set of tasks or clicks that happens within within in uh, user's desktop but uh, you know why the clicks are being made and why those those processes or tasks are executed uh is is going to be uh, important to understand and uh, you know if you don't apply the right level of business knowledge or the domain knowledge into the processes uh you're going to automate for the sake of automation so uh, you know you will see that uh it's broadly being used uh, within uh within this uh, this tool uh before i uh, hand over to uh, shikan i think uh, for us uh you know any process discovery tool uh is going to be transformational uh, as consultants uh you know we we are very focused on helping clients uh, accelerate the program for automation uh and and we are very keen to uh ensure that uh, uh you know this entire uh, digital transformation that companies are taking taking on uh brings in the right right value um you know one of the things that i keep saying to a lot of my clients as well is you know a discover equivalent tool kind of cannibalizes uh, consulting uh, revenues uh, but i think that's the right way to move forward uh, you know if you really have to uh, uh, you know add value to clients uh, you know only way is to disrupt uh, oneself and i think uh, we are very uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know we we are very strong believer on on this particular uh, automation uh, potential as well as the the discover tool and uh, we are we are kind of using this across different clients that we are working back with uh <clears throat> finally uh before I, I i wrap up my session uh i think uh the the entire process discovery tools have have kind of uh, made it really attractive uh, within the rpa market uh thousands of clients are adopting uh, uh and and in this year in particular 2019 we will see a lot more companies moving from pilots to scale delivery which means from moving from tens of bots to hundreds of bots uh and and you can only do if you if you are in a better position to identify the right processes that requires uh, automation um it also moving away from just task automation to an end to end process automation uh that can be achieved uh, only by using some of the 
some of the techniques that uh, you know Discover provides uh, in in identifying the processes around it. Uh, I I kind of uh, that come uh, brings me to the end of my my session. I I will now hand it over to Shrikant uh, to kind of take through the next uh, uh, few slides as well as the product demo. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Um, and good afternoon, everyone. This is Shrikant. Uh, as Satish and Vijay uh, have, have explained quite in detail, uh, process discovery is a key uh, to achieve the automation success. And uh, with the same thought, uh, Edra and Assistage teams have sort of invested in building a product uh, which we have recently launched at one of the uh, events. And the product is Assistage Discover. And uh, Assistage Discover is, uh, is a product within the suite of Assistage products, which, which are all about powering the intelligent automation. And as part of it, Discover focuses on unlocking the power of automation. And we do that by creating a automation blueprint, which focuses on which processes to pick up for automation, and it's not only picking the process, but it is also picking the right variations and exceptions of the process so that the success of the automation uh, is guaranteed. We also uh, provide insights on adopting the right technologies for, adoption, uh, for automation. So, for example, there may be certain processes which can be automated using the standard deterministic RP, but there will be certain other processes which require more intelligent capabilities to ensure that the automation is successful. So this our focuses on providing the right insight to the automation program head uh, to plan and create a roadmap for their automation journey. As Satish and Vijay talked about, the focus why we built this product was all about solving key challenges in the automation journey. Today, the discovery happens primarily through a consultant-based manual approach, and that has its own challenges. Challenges like the SME not being available, which delays the projects, the quality of data that is obtained is not accurate, and hence it results again in quality issues later on. The overall process is time-consuming, and many of the time the documentation is not ready or is not up-to-date, which means that significant effort has to be spent on creating that document. Discover focuses on solving these challenges by attacking the key problem areas which are the lack of process documentation and knowledge, the lack of clarity and empirical data on business case for automation, and lack of knowledge on variations and exceptions in the real-life processes. We do that by having a very unique approach uh, towards the discovery, which is all about capturing uh, the data from the business operations uh, users and their machines as and when they execute the actual operational process. Then this data is consolidated and analyzed through very powerful neural network-based data mining algorithms, which ensure that the right pattern for the process on the way that it was executed by the operations agents on the ground is created, and this algorithm creates uh, this is the this is the patterns which are represented in two kind of outputs. The first output is the process map, which is uh, a systematically created process map, which is purely based on the on the ground data, and the second is the analytical reports, which are based on the raw data that was collected from the operations user. This way, we tackle the key challenges that I spoke about a, a, a while earlier. 
One is we create a process map which essentially creates a documentation of a average process for the operations. Second, it creates the it is completely based on the empirical data, which is based on the keystroke and mouse click events of the operation agent. And that way, we are not relying on the existing knowledge base. And the third, and as I'm going to show you in the live or a demo very soon, it gives a view of the variations and the exceptions in the real life process, thereby allowing the the subject matter experts and the process owners to take the right calls on which variations and exceptions need to be automated, or in some cases, the process needs to be optimized or and and enhanced before the automation needs to be taken. With this, we will uh, jump into the live demo of the product and see how the product helps the enterprises to achieve the real value from their automation. As you can see on the screen, the process map that is generated by the product is, is displayed here. The example that we have taken here is a, a process about invoice creation. And here, the map shows a, a process which is recorded to nine transactions, and it shows seven different ways. Some of the interesting points that help the SME state the right decision about the automation are the fact that the individual variations here can be prioritized and can be picked up based on the occurrence or the frequency in which they have happened, while giving us a view of which variation is the most occurring. The other interesting part in this process is the data that is generated for the SMEs to take a, a real view of the process. So for example, the total number of nodes, which is the actual steps that the operations agents have done, are indicating both at an overall process level, but also at a individual variant level. Okay? And that also indicates the amount of manual activity that any agent has to do when he or she is executing that particular variant of the process. The, every single node in this particular process map actually indicates a simple interaction between the user and the machine. The, the key part here is the fact that we not only have recorded the actual interaction between the form of the input text, for example, for this particular node, but Discover has also captured the actual control name and the application name on which this particular event has happened. And hence, this information can be directly transported to the RPA engineer when he or she is trying to automate this particular process. So the level of information that is gathered here provides an ability to jump into RPA very quickly and also assess the, the opportunity for this particular task or a process to be automated using RPA. This, the, this process can be, the, the map can further be used to create empirical data and recommendations on the automation. So, so in this particular example, which was, which was shown on the process map, the automation recommendations can be very easily obtained by looking at the actual process map and looking at the areas where the manual activities are happening in a continuous manner or in a repetitive manner, thereby giving an indication that these are the areas for RP automation. 
the same data, the raw data that has been collected from the operation user, can further be uh, used to create a very detailed view about each process by calculating a technical opportunity for automation for those for that process. And for a for a particular business unit within an enterprise, the entire tasks and the processes that are done by their agent can be then categorized by looking at the technical opportunity score and hence a priority uh, dashboard can be created to determine which processes can be taken up for automation. The process map, as I had shown earlier, can also be used to determine if a particular uh, action needs manual intervention and hence potentially some certain intelligent capabilities may be needed for automation of that process. With this, I will I will uh, stop my demo, and I will uh, I understand that there will be questions uh, that people want to ask, and hence I will hand it over uh, to Rachel for taking up questions. Thank you. All right. All right. Um, Thanks, Srikant. That was wonderful. So, um, um, and a lot of good information. So um, everyone's going to have a chance to ask some questions. So please be sure to submit those now. Um, and also, we'll give you a chance to engage because we're going to have a polling question while each of you are typing your questions in. So go ahead and get ready. Okay, everyone, thanks so much. Uh, I promise you need the need your keyboards, but let me read the first, the polling question to you. Um, we want to thank everyone for joining today, and we're curious to see if you need some further assistance based on what you heard so far. It was a lot to take in. Um, so this is going to stay up, and you can continue to vote while we take your audience questions, so keep those coming in. So let us know if after today's session you would like to know any, do any of the following actions. You can speak to an expert on process discovery. You can have a demo, a proper one-on-one -on -one demo if you would like. Um, if you just need to know more about process discovery in general, let us know. Or if you feel like you've got what you need for now, indicate that. So please provide your response while we're doing the audience Q&A. And let me just say, we've had a lot of questions coming in, so I'll go ahead and jump to the first one. Um, and Shatish, I'm going to um, refer this one to you. Um, Jeannie or Janine would like to know um, what companies or what factors you find present with the people who are having the best success with your process discovery tool. Is there something common or something that fits well with maybe a company or an industry or any great companies that stand out to you that have worked well with your tool? It's a good question, uh, Rochelle. Um, companies uh, from different industries that kind of leverage this tool, it includes um, uh, telecommunication, telecom, banking, consumer electronics, and so on. So they have each, all of them have different kind of problems, but this is more of a generic product and a tool that can be applied irrespective of which industry uh, uh, the automation is happening. So some of them have are early in their journey and they would like to, you know, kind of understand and rework their process map before they invest in automation. And in a few cases, people have started automation, but, you know, they they believe they've done some low-hanging fruits, but they're not really sure what next steps and what kind of, what other processes should they consider. So, um, so people are leveraging this tool for various different, solving different kinds of problems. There are companies who have also looked at this tool and said, you know, this kind of data probably will help solve even you know, problems outside of automation as well, because it's a pretty rich kind of data, rich data that comes from this tool, and uh, the insights can be useful for many others, such as audits and compliance and risk management and so on. So forth. All right, fantastic. Um, and Marion would like to know, from discovery, your tool moves to automate, where does the definition happen, or is definition as a step done within discovery part? Srikant, would you like to take that? Srikant? 
Yeah, Srikant, would you like to take that one? And maybe I'll repeat it since we, I didn't indicate that I was directing it to you. So Srikant, this is a technical question basically on how the process works. In the discovery tool, um, it moves from the, in your tool, it moves from discovery to the automate phase. Where in the process or in the steps does definition happen or is definition captured within the discovery steps of the, of the tool? Can you address that one, Srikant? Okay, well, looks like Srikant probably is, I don't think you can hear him. So let me give it a shot anyway. See, the tool basically, the output of the tool is essentially a mapping of all the different uh, human system interactions that have happened at a task level. And all the details as it relates to, it's almost like a time motion study, if you were to uh, call it that, at a task level. So that's what it does. But translation of that, uh, data to actually automating is, uh, is is an effort that's done by the process consultants or process experts within the company, but this will provide necessary insight uh, that will help people craft the automation strategy, such as um, in, in one of the customers, as an example, they had a perceived happy path for the process. But when they ran this tool, they actually realized that there were many more variations, and some of the variations that they had were far more better to automate than the perceived happy path. So, um, so the tool actually can throw out certain information that you know the documentations of subject matter experts are not aware of. Uh, so, so the real definition and the translation of this to automation happens outside the tool. Hopefully, that helps answer the question. Okay, fantastic. Um, here's a great one. Kurt, I love your question, I have to say. Um, how do you help ensure the purity of the data you're collecting? Um, how do you ensure you're only capturing mouse movements, as an example, that are related to the process and not things like people checking email? And I don't see that Shurkant is back yet, so Satish, we'll start with you on that. Yeah, it's a brilliant question, and um, this is something that you know I think we 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 we, we get to hear this question quite often. Um, one is you know we have to keep it very simple. We provided a start stop button for the for users to you know kind of click and, uh, and and ask when to start capturing data or the card. That's one, and stop it when it's not needed. Uh, so secondly, we also have a certain, you know, in the admin console of the product, we will be able to configure which um, screens or URLs should be considered, which screens shouldn't be considered or omitted. So there are ways and filters that can be built in uh, uh, into the configuration to either allow or disallow certain screens uh, from capturing. The other thing we've also done is to make sure that the data that's entered is not necessarily what we capture. We only capture the, the interaction between, as I said, between the human being and the system. So it's essentially the clicks and so on and so forth. So the data is essentially not captured. And we've also built a lot of security controls around this to ensure that privacy and sensitive information is handled uh, in an effective manner. Hope that answers the question, Kurt. I think it does, um, and um, and I hope I don't say this name incorrectly. Um, Omanyi um, from DT Bank would like to know, um, what is the ease of integration of this solution to processes, especially where you have processes that are scattered across multiple applications? Let me take a shot at this, and then, uh, Jay, you're still on. Maybe you can help answer this. Um, See, this, as I said, see, there is a relationship between task and process, right? A process may have multiple tasks. So what the Discover tool does is essentially capturing this low-level information at task, right, and, uh, related to tasks. So there has to be a mapping between the task and the process that has to be done. Uh, that is one. Second is this tool itself can 
capture data at a user desktop or console across multiple applications, right? So somebody, the process may be, as an example, maybe on an SAP screen, and then from going on to a, a web browser, doing something else, then coming back, opening up uh, uh, an Excel, and pasting certain information, as an example. So, you know, this tool will be able to capture all of these clicks across different systems, whether it is Windows related, whether it is mainframe related, uh, SAP, Oracle, web, and so on. So it can spin through multiple systems. Want to all right, thank you. Yeah, Vijay, we'd like your reflections on that as well. Sure, Rachel. Now, uh, Satish, I think you covered it quite well. But, you know, I think I, I did see one of the other questions that said that how does it cover, how does this compare with other process mining tools, et cetera? And I think, you know, one of the key elements in this is an ability to, to you know, get these data through clicks uh, across different applications and not just concentrate on a few applications uh, which where the automations are being uh, driven on. Uh, and, 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 you know, the data or the details is largely in, in available in the desktops of the user, and, and this provides us a good view of how those activities are, are being done across application. I think that's one of the key differences uh, that we personally see in terms of how this compares us with other, other process mining tools and how this also differentiates uh, uh, when compared to other tools as well. Thank you, Vijay. And since we have you um, going, I think I'll direct the next question to you first because I know you work with a lot of different clients. Um, Andy would like to know um, how some tips on how to deal with resistance for employees who do not want their actions recorded. Um, have you provided any guidance to your clients? And then after you answer, we'll go to Satish. Well, first to you, Vijay. Sure, Rachel. I mean, Andy, that's a great question. and. and and typically, we, we get this across different clients as well, especially when you are driving automation at scale. Uh, you know, there are uh, worries around, you know, how do you handle a change and how do you make sure that, you know, people are more collaborative in this. Uh, I think there are two, three things that we do. Uh, one, um, you know, there is, there is a, like Satish mentioned, there's a start-stop button. Uh, so the employees could have an option wherever they, they don't want to get any of these recorded uh, then uh, they have an option to stop uh, the recording. So therefore, you know, they can share only information that they wish to share. Uh, the second, I think, is, uh, you know, we do get uh, upfront, uh, you know, direction or, or, or confirmation from the employees to say that this is how we're going to drive uh, automation at scale. At some way or the other, because, you know, eventually, when we go to some of the clients and tell them, you either have options to spend with the automation consultants, you know, five weeks continuous and also do your day job or, you know, just let this run at the background and get you a good amount of data points and then you spend about a week validating this. So somewhere or the other, there is a win-win situation that works out and, um, and, 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 and the option is still with the process owners to, or, or the employees to kind of uh, start and stop the process. I think it's a combination of these, um, and uh, you know, different uh, uh, companies adopt different strategies to to make this happen, and and also you know, culturally, uh, when we start working with global organizations, uh, different different aspects of this needs to be taken care to manage change as well. Uh, and I think this is an ongoing learning that uh, we are also going through with, uh, and uh, each company are uh, you know, companies are adopting different strategies to to overcome uh, the change uh, that this, this will provide or, or, or will undertake. Satish? Thanks, Jay. I think you, you've answered the question. Um, uh, so see, one is generally in general, in, in terms of automation, as I mentioned earlier, is like any other transformation initiative. So employee engagement is going to be critical. So. Um, and and it, as, as it relates to automation, there are two levels, right? One is accelerating, uh, doing what they're doing, and doing it faster, quicker, better, you know, that kind of stuff. And then there's amplifying, which is to bring in various other technologies to get more value from this process. So as and when the employees we've seen in some, some of our clients where they get engaged in, in value creation more, I think they, there's tremendous far more excitement than, you know, acceleration. So I think it's more around that 
I think in addition to the things that Vijay said, is, 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 is a little more a deeper engagement part of it uh, with, with the employees will uh, help address some of these uh, issues. All right. Thanks for both of your perspective. I think we're going to have time for probably three more questions. Um, but just as another quick reminder for everyone, if you haven't already done so, please to, please respond to the polling question that's up there. It will, once you click on it, it will remove from your screen. Um, but we're going to continue on with the questions, so you can still have time to submit one if you want. I think we've got three in the queue, and we'll see if we can get all the way through them. So Anne would like to know, are there Lean Six Sigma methodologies embedded into the application? Can you conduct things such as root cause analysis or value stream mapping as an embedded tool in this application? Okay, you want to take that? And Shrikant has indicated that he's back. So Shrikant may be from the, from the how does the tool work. Um, can you give us any background on whether or not Lean Six Sigma type approaches or those types of methodologies are included or were thought about in the development? Um, and then maybe after that we'll have Vijay comment on it. But Shrikant, I see that you're um, back now. Would you like to go ahead and, and take a stab at this part of the question? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm audible now. Yes, we hear you now, so go ahead. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the answer is uh, partially, I mean, uh, in the sense that uh, we do not do the root cause analysis as part of this tool. However, uh, it is possible in a way to do value stream mapping in the sense that uh, you can uh, understand uh, basically a customer journey by following what the customer agents are doing uh, in order to answer a customer query or in order to answer a particular customer problem. And that way, uh, by doing the customer journey mapping, you can essentially perform a value screen mapping uh, using this tool. But yes, it, it, is not, it is not a tool to do a root cause analysis uh, in, in its true sense. Okay, and VJ, did you want to comment? Um, did you find that with a lot of the clients that you work with, that their um, Lean Six Sigma qual continuous improvement teams are heavily involved in this process and maybe guide how to use this and integrate with any Lean Six Sigma tools they may be using? See, I think I think uh, you know the entire um, scale and automation. You know, we see a lot of business excellence team. Uh, participating in this uh, in this exercise, uh, it, we call it service excellence, process improvement, continuous process improvement teams involved. Uh, the element around to say, you know, how does it uh, how does it use any of these techniques? I think our ability to to take a view of an end to end process uh, that's provided as a part of this this tool as well. Uh, you know, one of the things that we always struggle uh, in any of the uh, in a Six Sigma projects, is you, know, you focus on the outcomes, uh, but you you also need to focus on to say how do you how do you make end to end transformational or end to end changes in the process. I think this 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 tool provides all those information, but you still have to take a lot of this information and then you know map it back into into what uh, what outcomes that you'd want to achieve. And I think Satish talked about it a little earlier as well. Uh, you know the definition part of, of of the automation, the definition part of the of the outcomes that you'd want to go after uh, will will sit outside the tool. Uh, but as long as you know from a data standpoint, this will capture quite 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 good uh, good elements as well. So so for me, I think it's a it's a great input. Uh, uh, but you still have to kind of work through those to add uh, additional layers of uh, you know value strip mapping and elements to. To make it more uh, aligned with in terms of what the objectives that you want to achieve for. Fantastic. And Satish, the next question is somewhat related, um, and I think I'll start with you on this one: is what involvement is needed from business subject matter experts in process discovery? So, can you talk a bit about their role, the subject matter experts in process discovery? Oh, uh, it's an excellent question, another good one. Um, I think their involvement is extremely critical because you know, no matter what the tool says or uh, tells, at the end, you know, the, the process is owned by these uh, process owners. So uh, the process owners are going to be the ones who finally decide what's the best 
path to automate, right? So, and they will be the ones to actually also define the the, the ROI, and we'll be able to track the ROI and so on. So, I think while tool is like a body, it it it, uh, it gives insights, it helps makes decisions, and and so on and so forth. Uh, the fundamentally, you know, the, the critical decision making and 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 crafting the automation journey to some extent is going to be in the hands of the subject matter expert and process owner. So, so their involvement is uh, very important. And uh, if any, this tool will help them make better decisions. That's what it does. And fantastic. Um, the last two questions are kind of related to um, looking forward a bit. Is um, they're both kind of interrelated. Is describing how the process discovery tool works with cognitive or machine learning type of, of automation. So maybe if there's any differences or considerations as you advance and use process discovery with things that, that have had cognitive or machine learning applied to that. Um, Satish, did you want to start with that and then let us know if you want anyone else to jump in? You see, the tool itself, as uh, Shrikat mentioned earlier, um, leverages machine learning and uh, you know, certain data mining algorithms to generate the process map from, from the raw data that gets captured. So that's what the tool does. Now, having said that, you know, all the other um, AI and ML kind of capabilities um, are augmented capabilities on top of RPA that's going to be used to amplify the value of automation. So, uh, so, so the tool itself doesn't necessarily leverage them. It doesn't necessarily recommend, but when somebody looks at the processes and how they're executed and so on and so forth, you know, it, it, it kind of gives certain indications that certain kinds of um, AI capabilities may be used. As an example, in one of the customers, you know, we were able to leverage uh, uh, sentiment analysis to to improve the effectiveness of how they dealt with, um, you know, uh, customer uh, emails and complaints. And that sentiment analysis essentially was uh, an AI capability that was built along with and attended RPA. So, so, so the tool gives certain you know, certain uh, pointers. And finally, the decision on what to use and what technology to use is going to be uh, done by the experts uh, of the process. Shrikant, do you think you want to add anything? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think just to add to what uh, Satish you said. Uh, uh, Machine learning obviously forms the very basis of uh, process mining uh, and for that matter any data mining. Uh, but I think uh, process discovery relies uh, in addition on the business semantics uh, which can uh, capture through the, uh, through, through the cognitive automation in the sense that uh, we can capture the what the user intended to do uh, in addition to what they have actually done on the application. So yes, machine learning and cognitive both form the basis of the process discovery and mining. That's what doing here. Thanks, Rikas. I think we're up on time. So uh, the next set of it, you know, hopefully you found this session to be useful and and how process discovery can play a role in automation journey and helping clients navigate through this fairly complex limited set of technologies that are involved in automation. So uh, thanks for participating. Let me hand it back to Rochelle. All right. Thanks so much. I think we could just go on all day. There's so many really great questions, but we are out of time. So um, first, let me highlight to everyone another quick reminder. You have three wonderful resources in your digital gift bag, which is called a resource list. Um, if you didn't get a chance to access them already, don't worry. Tomorrow, you'll receive a link to the recorded version of this session. And once you open that link, you'll be able to have access to that resource list once again. You have an outline and kind of an overview about what we've been talking about 
give up for a Edge Discover product. Um, a really good white paper that will help you kind of formulate some thoughts as you're one to talk to approach maximizing ROI using a process discovery. And then there's a little video. I think you'll want to take a couple minutes and take a quick look at that um, for additional resources as well. Um, so my big thanks to all three of our presenters, to Vijay, Satish, and Srikant. Um, you each added a little different element to this, which brought in all kinds of practitioner client case studies, real world use of the application, and so much more. Special thank you to everyone who listened live and on the recorded version because you asked some great questions um, and that really makes it much more interesting. Um, do note that if you'd like to continue the conversation, you also see that on the right side of your screen under the speaker bios there's little social buttons so you can reach out to any of our speakers um, or to me if you have any questions or would like to continue the discussion and have further information for you about that. Now, with that, let me just announce tomorrow's lineup. Uh, we have a, another action-packed day for everyone for tomorrow. We have four sessions tomorrow, um, starting off with how to scale intelligent automation for true business transformation. That will be at 8 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We'll follow that with human and robots, how to extend the value of RPA. That's at 930 and then um, just after that, you have to have a cup of tea. You come back to us at 11 a.m. Eastern Time for digitizing finance by fueling investments, reinvestments, strengthening security, and improving service. And then we'll close out the day tomorrow um, at 1 p.m. The session will be leveraging RPA, AI, and machine learning for automating document centric processes. So thanks to all of you for joining today. We hope to see you back again tomorrow. And on this note, this now concludes this webinar session.